Hey everyone, welcome to day two of Hollow Week. Yesterday I showed you guys how to do pumpkin carvings, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make cute little Halloween themed ringer tees. I was inspired to do this because of a drawing that I did last month. It was a vampire girl. I'll show it right here. If you saw my last Thursday DIY video, it probably looks familiar. I ended up making her little backpack that she's holding, and originally I asked if people wanted me to show how to make the shirts, and people did. So I thought that it fit into Halloween really well. I kind of think these are nice for daily wear, but also to kind of do like a low key Halloween if like your school doesn't let you do costumes, but you still kind of want to be Halloween y or something. So let's get started. I'm going to be showing you two different ways to do this. You'll need ringer tees, spooky designs, I'll leave a link to these ones that I made down below, a utility knife, fabric paints, pens, markers, or fabric medium and acrylic paint, a stippling brush or foam brush, cardboard, and for the first way, freezer paper and an iron, and the second way, paper and spray adhesive. First, the freezer paper way. This is my preferred method, and I actually have another tutorial here on my channel using this method. Tear off a piece of freezer paper big enough for the design. This stuff has one side that's matte and one side that's glossy. Typically, it should come off the roll with the glossy side on the bottom. Keeping the glossy side down, place it over and trace the design onto the freezer paper. Cut the design out with a utility knife, making sure to keep track of the little face pieces. Lay the shirt down and position the design in place, glossy side down as usual. If you want, you could try the shirt on first and make a small mark where the design should go. I eyeballed it, but I think it was a little off from where I wanted it to be. Iron the freezer paper down. It shouldn't take too much to get it to stick, you just want to make sure the edges are totally stuck down. Place the small face pieces. Iron the face pieces down. Stick a piece of cardboard in the shirt under the design and use your brush to tap paint onto the design. Here I'm using puffy paint. I just squeezed a bit on the shirt and tapped it in. The cardboard will prevent the paint from seeping through and getting onto the fabric on the back of the shirt. I totally forgot this step because I was too excited to paint the design. But thankfully the paint didn't bleed enough to fully show on the back of the shirt. There is a little bit on the inside, but you can't see it when I'm wearing it, thankfully. Set that aside to dry. Once dry, remove the freezer paper, and it's done. The puffy paint says it doesn't need to be heat set or anything, so this shirt is good to go. In between these techniques, I thought that I would show you my little craft fail with these shirts. At the store, I saw some fabric markers and I decided to try my hand at using one for the jack-o'-lantern design. I figured I could just freehand draw it on. So here's my attempt at that. The problem I ran into with this marker is that it bleeds. A lot. I tested it on a scrap piece of t-shirt fabric a bunch to make sure that I used the right amount of pressure to prevent a lot of bleeding, but that didn't seem to help that much. I'm not sure if I was doing something wrong. If anyone has any experience with these markers, please give me some tips. I'd love to hear them. Anyway, on to the last technique. Cut the design out of the paper. You can also choose to trace and cut the design out of thicker paper. I had success using normal printer paper, but you may end up having problems with the paint bleeding through. You might want to test it out on some scrap paper, just in case. Again, save the face pieces. Flip the paper over, place it on some scrap paper, and spray a light coat of spray adhesive. And then place it on the shirt. Repeat this for the tiny face pieces. This can be a little tricky, the small pieces may try to fly away. It might actually be easier to sort of dip the face pieces into some of the wet spray adhesive instead. Use the scrap piece to help place the face. and then stipple on your paint. I'm using a mixture of fabric medium and acrylic paint. 
If you are as well, just follow the instructions on the fabric medium bottle. Mine says to mix them up at a 2 to 1 ratio, paint to medium. Let dry. I had to do a few more coats to get this white opaque enough for this shirt. And it still wasn't as opaque as I wanted. Oh well. I also wanted to make this dude glow in the dark, so I did a layer of glow in the dark puffy paint on top of that. Again, let dry and then remove the stencil. I didn't let mine dry all the way, so here's a good example of what will happen if you don't either. The paper will rip around the edges and you'll have to sit there picking tiny pieces of paper away from those edges. Anyway, the fabric medium requires a heat setting, so I placed a scrap fabric on top and used my iron to set it. And then it's done! And there you go, some cute Halloween themed ringer tees. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. I post art videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday. And of course, every day until Halloween this week, minus Sunday, I will be posting Halloween videos. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, and Twitch, and I'll leave the information to all of those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm.